is it a good move to start writing start uh, i think you mean writing writing songs with singers versus instrumental cues this is a really good question because it kind of depends on you and your you know personality and if you feel like you can work with singers uh in a productive way i personally had a lot of difficulties working with singers in my career um i found that not all i don't want to generalize everybody but a lot of the vocalists that i would work with and this was 10 years ago so granted i think the world has changed quite a bit um because i think just the technology has become much more accessible to vocalists that can have their own home studios and record themselves but 2008 2010 that era um if i wanted a vocalist on one of my sync tracks i had to get them into my home studio um usually i had to pay them uh, had to work with their schedule, usually had to work with them showing up late, usually had to work with them being in a funky mood and had to either reschedule things or only get some of the work done or they just weren't really nailing that day. So we have to, you know, come back and do another day. So it for me, as I was thinking about working with vocalists long term in this business, it was just I was paying a big headache tax. Um, it's this little variable that I look for in my life. And anytime there's a lot of things, there, there's something I'm doing that's creating a lot of headache and stress for me, I try to eliminate it as soon as possible. And for me, working with vocalists was giving me a huge headache tax. And I just wanted to no longer pay that. And I also was comparing, you know, how much work and effort it was taking to work with this vocalist rather than just opening up my DAW and producing an instrumental track and start to finish i was done i worked on my schedule i worked when i was feeling like it and i just had a lot more control that way and i didn't have to worry about a personality conflict or you know somebody showing up late or any of that kind of stuff right and uh so for me i decided it wasn't a path i wanted to go down um now had i maybe met the right vocalist all those years ago who could self-produce in terms of recording themselves putting their own you know vocals on the tracks that i submit to them and they take care of sort of their mixing of the vocals or whatever i think i would have done a lot more of it because absolutely music with vocals is very very high in demand it's actually becoming more and more in demand in this industry as the years have gone on that's definitely what i've noticed if you look at some of these libraries in 2010 2012 <clears throat> a few of them had full songs but not most of them most of them were really just instrumental you know foreground or background cues but primarily just instrumental maybe with some haze hose chants maybe some choir elements on top but these days uh, most libraries are at least starting to develop a section of their catalogs specifically devoted for full songs. They can be cover songs, original songs, all different types. So if you can find a way to work with a vocalist that doesn't drive you nuts or, I mean, better yet, some of you guys can sing yourself if you actually got a decent voice and you can record yourself. Yeah, you're going to be a really in a much more powerful position, but it's it's one of those things where it's not worth losing your mind over. So even though there's definitely more opportunities for vocalists and usually generally you'll get paid better because you're adding more value to a credit when you you know put a track in there that has some human vo voice to it. But if it means you're losing your mind and you're having to deal with all these personalities and again, all the stuff that I was going through, it's not worth it. You know, just stick to your instrumental stuff, maybe co-produce with other instrumentalists, however it works best for you. So don't just, and I give this advice also for producers that are like, well, which genre is the most in demand, right? Which one actually makes the most money? I don't know if anybody's ever been able to do a study on that or to find out specifically what it is. I do know with the you know, genres that I obviously give you guys with Sync Edge uh, and the ones that we cover in Sync Academy, those I feel are the most licensable in terms of probably the most amount of income and, and placements come through those sort of mainstream uh, genres that we, we supply here on our services. But it's not worth jumping into one of those genres if you're not, if your heart's not into it, right? So if you're into rock music, hip hop music, whatever you're into, but you you kind of start hearing a lot more EDM music all of a sudden on all these promos, commercials, and sports networks. And you're like, ah, EDM's where all the money's at. And then you completely abandon, you know, where your heart really was and what you were really digging in search of the money, in search of the placements, in search of more of the marketability. You will find yourself burned out. Um, it's possible. I always say try, you know, definitely try new genres from time to time. You never know what you might actually like and be great at. But definitely don't go chasing waterfalls as the song used to say right don't go chasing these things that look like bri big bright shiny objects in the in the distance in the horizon because what you're going to be doing is finding yourself 
constantly starting over, right? So if you've been moving in one direction in this business where you've you got a really good handle on, let's say, rock music and you got the the kind of the structure down for what you want to do, you know, the library you want to work with, you know, this is the direction. And all of a sudden you hear about, oh, but vocal music gets paid more or, you know, it's orchestral trailer music that actually gets the bigger placements in sports. And so then you kind of question yourself and you second guess and you go, okay, well, maybe I don't want to go this direction. Maybe you should try to do this. And if you keep doing that, you really just aren't going anywhere. You're kind of just going in circles or not even going in circles. You're just going in one little direction for a few steps and then you turn around and go the opposite direction. So I do think it's better to sort of hunker down, figure out what works for you, what workflow works for you, what style of music is sort of just surging through your veins and that you just feel really, really passionate about. And just stick with it. Just stay the course. Keep going that direction as long as you know that it's certainly highly licensable. So, um, yeah, be true to yourself. Be true to your gut. And don't just chase the money. There's plenty of placements in all these genres that we talk about. And there's plenty of income to be made just from instrumental music. You're looking at somebody who created a full-time career barely making any vocal music. I have a couple of tracks out there in these libraries that have some vocals on it. I mean, literally maybe less than 20 or 30 of them. And I have over a thousand that are out there circulating. So the smallest minority of my catalog is vocal music. Didn't stop me from doing great in this business. So you can do that as well.